welcome back. Hello and welcome back. Uh, so today is a very fallish episode because it happens to be fall or autumn, whatever you autumn. prefer. You can you can you say know. either. Uh, so fall is it's just a cool season, and you know it's about pumpkins and leaves and the colors changing, and it's about fruit and season like pomegranates and apples, and this is mm-hmm. end of the season uh, flowers, and then you've also got squash. The good old squash. Good old squash from the good old garden. Uh, and there's just so many things about fall that are just, it's just I really love cool. changing leaves. That's my favorite. Yeah, it is cool. That's probably my fi- favorite part. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about is DIY fall decorations. Because, I mean, you could go to the store and you could just buy your decorations, but it's nice to make your own so you have, like, your own personal touch. And you it can is. change and you things up. sense of accomplishment. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, because even with these, we're going to show you different, uh, projects you can do, DIY decorations, but once you see them, you can be like, oh, I'd rather do that or this or tink it a little bit and make it your own style. All right. So have fun with it. Right. We'll start with the first one, which right. are candy corn pine cones. Now this one is really cool. I thought. Yeah, these are neat. Yeah. So you're going to need spray paint in white, orange, and yellow. You're going to need Mod Podge, a brush, and glitter in white, orange, and gold. So, before you start, um, if you want, you can take the pine cones, throw them on a baking sheet with, like, parchment paper, and then stick them in the oven at 200 degrees or less for about 30 minutes, and that'll kill all the bugs if there are any on there. So then, to get started, um, on the traditional candy corn, um, the orange is the largest area, so you begin by spraying the whole thing orange, and then you let that dry. And then after the orange coat is dry enough to handle, you hold the bottom of the cone and you spray the tip white, and then you wait again until that dries, and then you hold the white and you spray the bottom yellow. Um, typically, if the weather isn't too humid, each color will be dry within about 15 minutes or so. Yeah. So it shouldn't Humidity take too long. Humidity is not fun when you want to paint something. It just stick, it's sticky. It is not. And it just doesn't. And it doesn't dry. Yeah. So don't do it on a humid day. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and then the optional thing at the very end is once the cones are dry, you can use Mod Podge, uh, applies with the brush. Um, and then you can scale the tips and sprinkle on the appropriately colored glitter if you want. Yeah. I know some people, they cannot stand glitter. Yeah, like it gets everywhere. So I can't stand it. If you're it. one of those people, don't <laughs> it is worry optional. about it. You but don't if have you to are okay it. with glitter, you can add it. Yeah, it is a fun a fun touch. Um, so that one's cool. So the next one is fall painted mason jars, which um, I know we have a lot of these because we like to jar leftover food and, and such. Um, so what you'll need is adhesive vinyl mason jars, acrylic craft paint, a uh, foam brush, brush uh, twine, mini or battery run candles. Now we like to use the battery run because sometimes you forget and then you, you don't do. want to flame all yeah, that. It's not great. <laughs> uh, on, uh, still going. Uh, and then you'll need uh, corn kernels, uh, a leaf or paper. Now you can do it with either. I'd say use paper once you're going to see how you use it. Um, So it's actually really simple, but it makes a really cool effect. So you begin by tracing and cutting out a leaf out um, on the adhesive vinyl. Now, you could use a real leaf, but, you know, they chip and they move a lot. So I would recommend just printing out a picture of a leaf, like a, you know, a cartoon outline, and then cutting that out and then putting it on the vinyl and uh, cutting it from there. So that's why I say probably want to use paper. Yeah. Um, and then pick an acrylic paint color that you want to use, red or orange or yellow. That's very fallish, but you can use any color you want. Um, then you, after you stick the vinyl leaf onto the jar in any place you want, you put a thin coat of uh, paint on it, and then you allow it to dry completely before putting the next coat on, or else it'll like clump and it'll, you know, it, it'll, it'll be bubbly. Weird. Yeah, it won't look good. So wait till that's completely dry. And then uh, put the next coat on. And uh, this person said that it takes about three coats for the jar to be completely covered. But you'll just have to see when you do it. Uh, Once the mason jar is dry, gently gently peel away the vinyl leaf. Now be careful with this because you don't want to, you know, rip the paint. Um, And then if you do, you can always touch it up with a brush at the end after you pull it off. Um, And then if you want, you can add some corn kernels to the bottom and place a mini or battery run candle inside of it. And then you have like some light going up and it'll brighten up your room. Uh, You can also add some twine or ribbon around the top of the jar to finish it off. So that's a really simple one and it seems really fun. And it's a cool effect. It's very nice for fall. All right, so the next one are monogrammed fall letters. So you're going to need just a plain letter or multiple, whatever you want, Mm -hmm. uh, spray adhesive, and fake leaves. 
Um, so first you use the spray adhesive on the letter to form a stronger hold and then you just stick the leaves all over in whatever order you want and then you let it dry and you put it wherever you want. Right, and so. you can pick your own name or give it as a gift. Um, yeah, it's a nice gift thing. Yeah. Like even if you put it like on top of a present or something. Right, exactly. I mean you could get like a mini letter. Um, I mean, I guess you could use real leaves, but wouldn't they end up just drying up and Yeah, they get there? all crinkly. Yeah, so we probably want to use fake leaves for that one. Uh, okay, so this is another thing with mason jars, except it's the little band around the top for the lid. Now, it's not the actual thin lid part. It's the band that goes around it that tightens it. So you're going to use that. So it's called a mason jar lid pumpkin. So what you're going to need is, of course, the mason jar lid bands, uh, orange spray, spray paint, uh, orange yarn and cinnamon sticks. Now first, spray paint the bands well with orange spray paint. Um, and then spray paint one side first, then allow the other to dry, to allow, allow that to dry for a few hours, and then do the other side. And just keep doing that till they're, they're fully covered. Um, just yeah, it might take get a little everything. while. Yeah, that, you'll that's, get it. Yeah, that's probably the most time consuming thing. Okay, and then after you do that, um, make sure that you put all of them in the same direction in the circle of um, a pumpkin. And like as you see in the picture, you'll notice that the grooves part of the bands are facing one way, like the same way going around. And this is important to get this pumpkin to fan out nicely. So then you wrap a piece of orange yarn through the bands, then pull as tight as you can. Um, you want it to look really nice with like to, to tighten it or else it'll just flop around and it won't keep the shape. Um, it may help if you have someone th that can help you with this part. Um, you can have someone put their finger on the string to keep it in place so you can tie a tight knot. Um, this is another important detail to ensure the pumpkin, you know, shapes up properly when fanning out and then you cut off any excess uh, string. Then once you've tied it, it's just be a matter of gently separating the lids so they space out evenly into the pumpkin shape. And then uh, all you do is you pop a few cinnamon sticks in the middle to be the pumpkin stem, and, you, and then you're done. It might take uh, five to six um, cinnamon sticks, but it depends on the size you get. Um, and then that's pretty much it, and then you can just put it wherever you want. I thought that was really, really Yeah, really that's cool. a fun one. Yeah. All right, so the next one is a pumpkin centerpiece. Um, so this one's really easy. You just need a glass vase and a pumpkin. Uh, and all you do is you just take the mini pumpkin, you need a small one, and you stick it inside the clear glass vase. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Now, being a centerpiece, you could pretty much add anything you want in there. Yeah. As long as you start with the glass, you could throw in leaves. You could throw in acorns, other fall things like pine cones. Yeah. Um, you could even put the leaves on the outside of the vase a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of a nice thing that just makes it a nice centerpiece for your table. Right. So the centerpiece, I mean, as long as you have that glass thing, you can put any kind of fall thing you want in there. Right. And mix it up. All right. So uh, the next one is fall painted acorns. Now this one is really simple too, but it's really cool. All you're going to need is orange, red, uh, yellow, and gold paint, uh, a paintbrush, and acorns, and then a vase or bowl, uh, whatever you want to put them in. So all you do is you get the acorns. Uh, it could be a fun activity for if you have kids, you can go out and find acorns and then come back and paint them. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so then all you do is you paint the bottoms of the acorns um, the different colors that you want. Now there's one picture where it's all gold, and then there's another picture where it's like brown, orange, and yellow, and you can do red too, you can just do any colors, and then you can just use those, like if you want to make the centerpiece, you can put those in to the centerpiece um, with whatever you're putting in, or you can just put them in a bowl, or a vase, just the vase, or anything that you want, and it can be a cool little centerpiece, or something to the side. Um, right. Right, so it's just like a pop of color on those acorns. Yeah, it acorns. just spruce things up. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Our, I believe, last one yes. are the leaf stamp napkins. So what you're going to need are leaves, napkins, go figure, um, craft paint, a paintbrush, a rolling pin, and paper towels. So to start, you want to look for leaves throughout your yard or your neighborhood, and you want to grab some of different varieties and styles. Don't get all the same kind. Get different. Yeah, get, get a variety so you Change find it out. Like. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then you choose a leaf and you turn it over so that the veiny side is facing up. Um, and then you dot the craft paint on each leaf. Um, 
This person went with a metallic brown paint, but you can do any color you want, so don't limit yourself. Um, and then you brush the paint across the back of the leaf using a brush. A roller does not distribute enough paint, so a brush is your best option. You want to use that one? Mm -hmm. And then you turn a leaf over and carefully position it on the cloth napkin however you'd like it. Okay, so then after that's done, you paint your leaf. Then you lay a paper towel over top of it. Now, one thing on the, the I wanted napkin. to say about this is that they did the napkin, or the paper towel, but it also might work better if you use, like, a piece of cardboard because that's more stable when you uh, roll over it, but you can use either. Yeah, that's true. Cardboard does sometimes work better. Yeah. But either one would be probably work. It yeah. It just might be your preference. Right. Um, and then this will ensure that your rolling pin does not get paint on it, which could transfer to other spots on your napkin because you want to keep it clean. You do. So, firmly use the rolling pin. You roll over the uh, paper towel or cardboard on the leaf on the napkin. Um, and then you transfer the paint onto it, and then you take everything off. You gently pull the leaf back, let it dry, and you're done. You are done. Um, so obviously you should probably practice on an old napkin right. or try something else before you put it on your actual thing you want it. Right. Because you want to figure out if you can do it well. Um, and then you can also test out a variety of leaves and see what they look like. Because some are better than others. I think it's better with more veins. I think yeah, it looks better. Yeah, the thicker and bigger the veins are, the more yeah. you'll get. Yeah. Um, this says they have been tasted in the wash. <laughs> so I guess when your washing machine has to taste them, they will come out just as bold. So don't worry. It's supposed to be tested in the wash. <laughs> okay. Well, um, but yeah, so about that, I was, when I saw this online, I was actually wondering that myself of when it goes to the wash, isn't the paint going to come off? Right. Um, but somebody in the comments asked that question, and the person who put the blo uh, blog up said that they tested the uh, napkin that they did all their test prints on. They put that through the wash, and they said that it came out just it, just fine. Nothing came out. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously don't use washable paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you'll be fine. Yeah, use, uh, so. you just look that on the fine print on your bottle. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's our uh, DIY fall decorations. So go forth. Yeah, and, and autumn I mean, there's, on. There's so many more that you can do. Um, so many varieties. I just made a joke. I said autumn on, like an ottoman. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> like an ottoman, but I said autumn on. Yeah, but what does oh. an ottoman have to do? It's with just funny because it's a word. I'm sorry, I don't get it, but, <laughs> but comment down below if you get her joke. I don't I get it. I just didn't realize that I did that. I was just, oh, okay. okay. All right. Um, so, again, hope you enjoyed these uh, fall decorations, and go and try them for yourself. And then uh, we have one more thing we wanted to show you guys. So, um, we did a video on 100 videos, because we've had, uh, now it's over 100 videos, but we did one for that. But we've actually gone over... Um, 100 episodes, um, which is different. It's just this show, not the sketches and such. Um, and we didn't even realize it. Like, we totally forgot. Like, we were gonna make an episode about 100 episodes, um, and we didn't. Um, we over totally heads. went over our heads. <laughs> we did not remember. But, um, our Aunt Carolyn, who's actually been on the show, you can go watch her. She's been on, uh, twice. She, uh, did not forget, and, uh, she got us. We thought this is really cool. So, she was in, um... Hollywood a few months ago and while she was there she got us something for our 100th episode um, And she'd been saving it until we had it now today is our 109th because we'd totally forgotten But we're gonna show you anyways um, yeah. So it's it's this little Oscar and it <laughs> says best director ever and we thought this was really really cool um, That she got this for us <laughs> to commemorate even though we forgot. Yeah, so. we, we did forget um, But she didn't so we just want to thank her and say that we really appreciate it, and it's it's a really cool uh, thing, and it's going, watch, it's going right here. It has here. its spot already. It has its official spot for Taylor Treasures. Um, so we just want to thank her, and thank you for sticking around, and we just thought there was something really cool that, that uh, she gave us. Um, and now it is time for the news.
A new group of very, very secret people in a very, very secret organization have released a warning this fall that we might all be under surveillance. They claim that everyone's scarecrow, whether authentic or decoration, will be watching us. They suspect it is so that the scarecrow can learn how to make cream puffs, but there is still some speculation on that opinion. And did you know the pumpkins can be used to make car tires. They won't last long, and you can never seem to find the same sizes. But for the minute and a half they are on your vehicle, just think what great things you are doing for this planet. Then, after the pumpkins fall off, you'll probably want to have a number for a tow truck handy. Now it is time for the Taylor Chitterbox. Alright. Alright. I have to name ten different kind of dogs. Psh, that's easy. That is easy <laughs> for her. Uh, I have to tell one truth and one lie. Okay. Alright, so what are your dogs? Well, Beagle, Lab, German Shepherd, Bichon Frise, uh, Chihuahua, Dalmatian, St. Bernard, Bernese Mountain Dog, Boxer, and how about a Shih Tzu? Okay, there you go. You did it. Okay, so my one truth and one lie is I once, I once um, hit my thumb in a door or I hit it in a car door. You hit it in a door. I hit it in a car door. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. That was the door. Yeah, and I might have done both, but I, th um, I can't remember doing it in door per se, but I know I've done it in a car door once, so maybe it's truth to both of them. I don't even know. I can't remember. <laughs> but she I does both her thumbs, so she's fine. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So you, you would have gotten it right, I guess, either way, because now that I think of it, I probably have hit it in a door too. I'm very clumsy. <laughs> so <laughs> we are all winners. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, so again, we hope you enjoyed this episode, learned some new DIY fall decorations. Um, make sure to give this video a like and a comment, and make sure to subscribe. Yes, please. And after you subscribe, make sure to press the bell so you get all of our videos in your notifications box. And we'll see you next week. Bye! Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. I'm going to sing out Canada while you talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, make sure to subscribe down here. Make sure to subscribe. And uh, make sure to watch your previous episode up here if you want to. And if you want to watch a random episode, you can click down here.